Not many people know this, but this is an x-ray of my teeth. I was born with an impacted tooth, so much so that it's eroding and destroying this other tooth here. So I need the help of a professional to sort it out. But what kind of professional? Definitely not a doctor, and certainly not a professional calibrator. Yes, of course I will need to see a dentist. And just like choosing the right professional, you should choose a television based on your own requirements. This is a table listing the key specifications of most 2022 OLED TVs announced by A Brands so far. And once again, LG Electronics is the only OLED manufacturer providing 4 HDMI 2.1 ports on its TV in the year 2022. If you are wondering why Panasonic, Philips, and Sony still only offer 2 HDMI 2.1 ports on their TVs, it is because these manufacturers all use a similar chipset from MediaTek, which provides 2 HDMI 2.0 inputs and 2 HDMI 2.1 inputs, of which one will be the ER port. On the other hand, LG has developed its own HDMI 2.1 SoC since 2019, allowing the South Korean brand to put 4 HDMI 2.1 ports on their TVs, and judging from the bandwidth increase from 40 gigabits per second to 48 gigabits per second this year, it is possible that there will be a new chipset for 2022 OLED TVs such as the C2 and G2. If next-gen gaming is important to you, then the obvious choice is one of the LG OLEDs. Besides offering 4 HDMI 2.1 ports, the LG C2 and G2 will be compatible with 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision from the Xbox Series X, a feature that's not supported by rival OLED TVs equipped with the MediaTek chipset. In some ways, whether you go for the C2 or G2 will depend on the screen size you need. If you want the smaller 42-inch and 48-inch OLEDs, then you will have to go with the C2, since the G2 is only available in 55 inches or larger. Similarly, if you are gunning for a 97-inch OLED, you lucky sort then your only choice is the 97-inch G2. Between the C2 and G2, the G2 will be equipped with a heatsink which will allow the panel to be driven brighter, delivering more impactful HDR including for gaming. Now, there's been some confusion over whether the 42-inch and 48-inch C2 will be equipped with OLED EVO technology, and LG Electronics is adamant that the 42C2 and 48C2 will still be designated as OLED EVO, but they won't go as bright as larger models, due to lower pixel aperture ratio, as well as the prioritizing of longer OLED lifespan since these smaller sizes are more likely to be used as gaming monitors. While it is straightforward for me to recommend the LG OLED TVs if playing next-gen games is important to you, the situation is not as clear-cut for watching movies and sports, two other major use cases of a television. If you are a videophile who prefers your television to faithfully reproduce the creative intent, especially in terms of color palette, then I expect the Panasonic LZ2000 to be a very strong contender, especially now that it is available in 77 inches, which will be music to the ears of those of you who have been craving for a larger OLED TV from the company for Yonks. I have always admired the color accuracy on Panasonic OLED televisions. In case you are not already aware, the Japanese brand has worked with leading Hollywood colorists such as Stefan Sonnenfeld to tune the colors on their televisions, resulting in a superior internal 3D LUT that delivers cinematic-looking pictures even out of the box in the most accurate picture presets. Of course, professional calibration can level the playing field for LG and Sony OLED televisions, but at our TV shootout last year, the near-black presentation of the Panasonic GZ2000 consistently came closer to matching the Sony BVM-X300 reference mastering monitor than those of the LG G1 and the Sony A90J, so let's see if this trend continues in 2022. Talking about professional calibration, unfortunately I am no longer visiting clients to calibrate TVs, because producing all these videos on this very channel takes up so much of my time. But I've been working with UK electrical retailer Capital More Leads to offer a pre-calibration service that has been trained up and approved by me, where they will run in a television you bought from them, pre-calibrate it, and then send the TV to you. We've been doing this for more than six months, 
and customer feedback has been excellent. So please give Crypto More Leads a call if you wish to buy a pre-calibrated television that accurately reproduces the creative intent of the directors and producers. Okay, back to these 2022 OLED televisions. And in terms of color volume, I have high hopes for the Sony A95K Master Series OLED because it uses a new QD OLED display technology instead of a traditional WRGB OLED panel which is susceptible to wide subpixel dilution effect. As I've pointed out before, even back in 2019 when I reviewed the Panasonic GZ2000 OLED. Despite the increase in peak brightness, there is actually no increase in color volume on the Panasonic GZ2000. So some scenes, actually, you may see a certain dilution, a certain desaturation at higher peak brightness because at the end of the day, this is a consumer WRGB OLED panel. QD OLED's true RGB subpixel structure can deliver more saturated colors at high luminance levels. And when this is combined with a heatsink which allows the OLED panel to be driven brighter, we think the Sony A95K is likely to provide the closest match to reference mastering monitors in terms of brightly saturated colors. For watching sports, the two key attributes I normally look for in a television are 1. Motion handling and 2. Screen uniformity. And the good news is that all OLED TVs should excel at both. For motion, OLED's near-instantaneous pixel response time means that you won't see ghosting or trailing artifacts in fast-moving spots. And although OLED is still subject to sample and hole motion blur, this can be minimized with a combination of motion interpolation and black frame insertion or BFI. Screen uniformity on modern OLED televisions is also generally better than what's found on LED LCDs which means you won't get distracted by vertical bands or the discrete effect when the camera pans around following the sports action on screen. In addition to motion handling and screen uniformity, in recent years we have found another important factor to consider when watching sports on OLED televisions. But before I go into that, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Since the pandemic started, some streaming providers, including Netflix, have throttled the beat rate of certain shows, especially in Europe, resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix at higher beat rates with better picture quality. You can also get more content that's not available in your region, perhaps the US Netflix library which contains more movie titles. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTVTEST, you will get 83% off and 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay, most sports content usually contains some static elements, such as the scoreboard or the channel logo, which can trigger the anti-screen burn algorithm on modern OLED TVs to dim down not only the static elements, but also the entire screen to reduce the risk of image retention and permanent burn-in. All WRGB OLED televisions are affected by this to a certain extent, because it is a protective mechanism implemented by panel supplier LG Display. Although on LG OLED televisions, you can disable the logo dimming algorithm entirely through the service menu. Sony WRGB OLEDs are generally worst hit by this logo-related dimming, particularly with peak brightness set to high which is necessary for bright room viewing or HDR spots, since unlike LG, Panasonic or Philips, Sony doesn't even provide a setting in the regular user menu to adjust the logo luminance dimming. Interestingly, my respected colleague Rasmus Larsen from FlatPanelsHD.com, who had a first look at the Sony A95K Master Series OLED, noticed that the QD OLED seemed to employ a less aggressive anti-burning dimming algorithm than the Bravia A90J WRGB OLED. So perhaps together with Sony's highly accomplished motion handling, 
the Bravia A95K may end up being the TV to beat for watching sports. Before you go all gung-ho on the A95K, however, please bear in mind that we have no indication of the price or availability yet. I expect it to be more expensive than other flagship WRGB OLEDs, and it is only going to be available in 55-inch and 65-inch screen sizes. There's no Philips flagship OLED on this table, because the company will only launch its flagship TV at the EFA trade show in September. But if you are a fan of Philips Ambilight Integrated Bias Lighting Solution, at least there's the 807, which is the world's first TV publicly advertised to be using the latest OLED EX panel from LG Display. To be honest, I expect most TVs on this list to use an EX or at least a WBE panel. LG Electronics has confirmed that the C2 and G2 will be using the most advanced panel from LG Display, whereas Sony Electronics referenced a high-luminance panel when talking about the A90K and A80K at a pre-CES briefing where no journalist including me was allowed to reproduce the presentation slide. Contrary to what some quarters may think, getting an OLED EX or WBE panel is not the be-all and end-all. It all depends on how the TV manufacturer intends to drive the panel. And in my opinion, only the presence of an additional heatsink will embolden a manufacturer to drive the panel harder to reach higher peak brightness. So I expect the highest peak brightness and APL to come from a three-way battle between the LG G2, the Panasonic LZ2000, and the Sony A95K, with the A95K QD OLED likely having the upper hand in color volume. Now, some of you may think that your OLED television is already bright enough, that all this neat chasing is just pointless, in which case, you have to watch this video, where I demonstrate why your OLED TV isn't bright enough. <laughs> 